thank you very much and greetings to everyone wish i could be with you in greece the accent is perfect and uh, perhaps just a couple of words on the ibis before uh, i address the the topics of, of today so uh, ibis is a science policy mechanism it is the intergovernmental uh, mechanism for the interface between science and policy for biodiversity so I'm sure that everyone in the room will be familiar with IPCC. And so IBIS, if you will, is the equivalent of uh, IPCC for uh, biodiversity. And so our work is to provide scientific information as a basis for decision uh, making for governments, for uh, all other stakeholders. In particular, now we are busy with preparing for the COP15 of the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is starting a week from now very high stake for that cop since uh, it's a whole new global biodiversity framework which will be uh, negotiated uh, next week so uh, just quickly again it best produced a landmark report uh, in 2019 the global assessment of uh, biodiversity and ecosystem services and you may uh, recall that one of the conclusion uh, was that one million uh, species of plants and animals are threatened with extinction out of a total of about uh, 8 million. And uh, we care about that for a diversity of reasons. One of them is that it is affecting uh, the capacity of ecosystems to function and to provide a number of contributions such as the capacity to control the emergence of diseases. We'll speak about that a bit more, but also the capacity to mitigate against climate change, to provide pollinators for crops or to provide uh, enough fresh water of a good uh, quality. A and so the conclusion was that sustainability will not be reached by uh, anyone with such negative trends for nature. Nature is the basis for, for everything else that we are discussing. Uh, today. So coming now on the topic of the interlinkages between uh, biodiversity loss and pandemic. So IBES produced a, a report just uh, during the, uh, the pandemic uh, in 2020, which was based on 700 uh, recent uh, scientific uh, publications on the topic. And I'd like to share four uh, major conclusions uh, quickly, just highlights, of course. And so the, the first one was really that uh, the report uh, replaced emerging uh, diseases in their environmental, in their ecological context, if you will, because too often we think about diseases only once they've reached us as diseases and we speak about them in a medical context. And so the idea is to really understand where diseases originate from. So pandemics emerge from microbes, which are found in nature, mostly on animals. That's why we talk about zoonoses and mostly in high uh, biodiversity regions and typically in tropical uh, regions. So uh, the report also explains that the pathogens which are on animals are going to spill over, as uh, we say, into humans uh, when people are brought into contact with infected animals at, la at large scale, because typically of human driven activities such as big land uh, development uh, projects and infectious diseases and pandemics are becoming more uh, frequent. The second uh, observation and conclusion is that uh, there are uh, key direct causes for the emergence of diseases, which uh, the report highlighted. The first one is land use change, big projects uh, such as uh, deforestation, for example, uh, for cattle farming, for meat uh, or agricultural expansion, uh, Think about palm oil uh, cultivation, uh, for example, or also any big mining or logging uh, projects. Those are major drivers of biodiversity loss uh, as well. And so the second uh, direct driver is wildlife trade. And that is so because uh, wildlife trade provides intimate contacts between wildlife, humans, and sometimes livestock uh, as well, which acts as a conduit between uh, wildlife and, and humans. And climate change might also play an increasing role in this 
leading to new opportunities for pathogens to find new hosts and for diseases to, to emerge. The third conclusion is that there are direct causes, of course, but these are based on uh, what is called underlying causes. And that, of course, relates to what people do, the decisions they make. And in particular, this relates to consumption uh, patterns. Uh, this is uh, the consumption of meat, for example, which drives part of uh, deforestation or the demand for pet, uh, for food, for medicine, for fur. Uh, which uh, drives the wildlife trade. So now in terms of uh, options uh, for action, and, and to conclude, uh, one of the main uh, conclusion was that there could be a new way uh, to deal with pandemics, which would be based on preventing uh, their emergence, uh, the emergence of diseases through an ecological approach as a complement, of course, to the current medical approach. So we need to complement the medical approach by an ecological approach to control the prevention by much better understanding how diseases emerge uh, from the uh, environment. And to do this, to do this uh, of course, more work needs to be done on microbial diversity in wildlife, and in particular, on putting in place a monitoring system, we know how to do that, but that needs to be really uh, deployed, in particular to detect hotspots of emergence so that we could, for example, inform uh, areas uh, where uh, which are hotspots and where uh, projects should probably uh, not take place uh, in terms of major uh, land use uh, projects. And, and another uh, interesting uh, conclusion was that new institutional bridges need to be built between uh, different communities uh, who have so far uh, not worked uh, together. And these are uh, the medical community on one hand with the veterinarian community that need to start working with people who are in the business of uh, conserving uh, nature, protecting, managing uh, nature, typically people who work in forestry or in conservation uh, communities. These bridges are, bridges are meant to really become better uh, equipped uh, to prevent uh, the future emergencies. And this is what is typically uh, referred to as, as One Health. So I hope that in these few minutes I, I have given some a flavor of some of the uh, issues that are currently uh, discussed uh, in this uh, community in particular under the One Health approach. Uh, thank you for your attention and over to you.